Hi, I'm Scott Anderson, a tech lead on the product team at Influx Data. And I'm Zoe Steinkamp, a developer advocate at Influx Data. So Zoe, in one of the other videos, you talked to Sam about the Influx DB check and notification system. Do you have any examples of that system being used at scale? Yes, I do indeed. So this is one of the customers that we have that I really enjoy their use case. They are a hydroponics farm in a urban environment that specifically gets both winters and summers. So lots of temperature variation. Exactly, which is very important even inside of an indoor farm environment. In fact, I would say it's even more important because the elements can really cause the greenhouse to get quite hot and quite cold. And specifically, they are growing both tilapia and lettuce together. Interesting, I, I like both of those. Exactly, don't we all? So in this system, they have many different types of IoT sensors, machines, and just in general in the farm environment to pretty much just keep track of everything. This environment is very, very dependent on everything being at the right kind of level. You don't want it to be too hot, too cold, too many nitrates in the water. Obviously the fish need a very ideal environment or else they won't flourish and unfortunately they might just die which is not good. And same with the lettuce. It also needs a lot of things because it's not growing in soil, it's growing in pure water. Mm. So all this data that they harvest is then put up into InfluxDB because it's all time series data. And it's specifically geared towards making sure that all of the systems in place are working as intended. So it seems like they're, they're monitoring these specific metrics to make sure that everything's running correctly. So what, what kind of checks do they have to help in that monitoring? Yeah, so I've just put down a few examples here just to give a rough idea. Obviously they have more checks that I'm listing here. It would take up the entire board otherwise. But one thing to know is they like to make sure that their humidity is in a certain range, that their temperatures are below a certain amount and that their oxygen level stays above five milligrams a liter. These are all three examples of our threshold checks. And then they specifically have a dead man check that runs every minutes on the nitrates. They actually have dead man checks on almost all of their sensors, but this one is the run that runs the most often because if the nitrates really get out of whack, it can be very dangerous for the overall health of the fish and lettuce. And the dead man check just ensures that data is being reported. That's correct. All of these are more to just keep things where they should be, but the dead man check is just to make sure that there's really nothing wrong. And you know, that could be a source going down because of a power outage or maybe because some water splashed on something in a farm environment. Uh, which I could definitely see happening. So with these checks that are happening, what kinds of notifications are they sending? Are, is it sending a notification for every time a threshold is met or is there other, other types of notifications that they're sending? Yeah, so for them, they're specifically sending on critical statuses when it comes to the threshold and the dead mans. And those are being sent through pager duty, which then end up going to the employees on the farm floor. So they don't employ very many people at their indoor farm. It's just not necessary for the most part. But of those few people that they employ, they all can receive an alert if something is wrong, which is great because there's not really a lot of time to check all of this throughout the day. Nobody has all that time on their hands. So it's better to just be told when, oh, the pH level is getting a little bit high, we need to make some adjustments, or the temperature is getting a little hot, we should probably kick on the AC today. And so that really helps them be lean and mean, I would say, in their industry. So they don't have to rely upon so much human interaction as much as our checks and notification system doing the heavy lifting for them. So really, it seems like they're running a pretty sizable op operation on a pretty lean team simply because InfluxDB almost acts as another employee for them that only puts human hands on the product when human hands are needed. Exactly, and another thing I'd like to mention is that they also do a little bit of a different system, but they do nightly reports as well, which are less about the critical status and more about just for maintenance and overall improvement. So that's more things on the machine side, like if the machine just seems to not be keeping the water pressure at an ideal level, that can tell the nightly crew that it might be time to do some adjustments on it. And they also have their checks set like this because they have a an employee who checks it roughly once a month just to make sure everything's going well, they don't actually receive a notification. They're just going through the check and alert history instead. Oh, interesting. 
So I'm, I'm curious. I mean, I, I love this use case. I love the efficiency that they're they're getting from the InfluxDB system. I'm just curious, why, why did they choose InfluxDB as their solution? So they're in a really young and very, very unique industry. As they told us, they could do some of these, especially the machines. There were tools that they could use to monitor them, but not at this scale and not at this customization either. Because that's the thing, there's no out of the box solution for this. They were going to have to do something on their own and they wanted to make their lives easier by having our system in place because we allowed them to do it all. We were not specific in the type of sensors we would accept or the type of machines we would accept. We could accept all of it as long as the data was time series data. And this is a really great example of how the InfluxDB platform can really make a business run efficiently. Hopefully this helps you with what you're building and I can't wait to see what you build.